In this video on editing in Aperture 3, we're going to cover quick brushes and presets, two new features in Aperture 3, as well as some common adjustments that I use and the lift and stamp tool that will allow you to apply those adjustments to multiple images at the same time. First, a note on editing in Aperture. One, all editing is non-destructive. That means you can make as many changes as you want to an image, make it look great, make it look terrible, doesn't matter, because at any point you can get back to the original file. You're not making permanent changes, so don't be afraid to play around. Secondly, duplicates. If you right-click on an image, you can create a duplicate of a version so that you'll be able to see one that you make an adjustment to as well as the original. Uh, you might do this in the case of if you want one image to be in color and another to be in black and white, for example, or one cropped and one not cropped. I'm going to undo this duplicate by going up to Edit, Undo. Nextly, you can uh, remove any adjustments that you like. If you go over to the Adjustment panel, click on this wheel here, you will always be able to reset all adjustments, which means, again, make as many changes as you want. You can always undo it. Lastly, a note on RAW files. If you have a digital SLR camera, ensure that your file format is RAW, not JPEG. This means that when you bring the RAW image into Aperture, your edits will look much more realistic. If you're editing JPEG images, they'll start to look uh, falsified and unnatural very quickly. So be sure that you're taking the picture in a RAW format on your camera so that the edits look better once you bring them into Aperture. All right, let's get on to the editing. I'm going to go down to this picture of a glass down here. I like to edit in full screen mode, so I'm going to hit F for full screen. I'm going to hit H, as in horse, to bring up the HUD, the heads-up display, uh, that will show up on the left side. If you want your tools back, you can always move your mouse to the top of the screen to see your tool bar, or to the bottom of the screen to see your browser with all the images. I'm going to hide that. Firstly, when you make adjustments in, in the default panel over here, I highly suggest going from top to bottom. They do this on purpose. It's important to set your white balance and your exposure first before you start adjusting things at the bottom, such as color. Because then, if you go back to change your white balance, your color will be all messed up, so you're going to have to do it again anyway. So, go from top to bottom. In this case, let's start with white balance. I can click on this little eyedropper button here on the left side. And then I'm going to move my mouse onto something that is a neutral gray color. Watch as it changes the color cast of this image. The ice right now looks a little bit blue, but as I click here, it's going to automatically reset the white balance. Now it looks a little bit more yellow, but also more natural. If you want, you can manually change this. For example, if I like the ice to look cool as opposed to warm, giving the whole image a, an icy flavor to it, then I can just drag this slightly to the left. Good. Next, exposure. It is a little bit dark, so I'm going to drag exposure up some. Notice the histogram at the top. As a general rule of thumb, you want this histogram to reach both ends of the spectrum. So I'm going to keep dragging it up to get a little bit higher up there. Look at the image. Some of it might look a little bit overexposed, but I'm going for an artistic look here, so I really don't mind um, if some of it is washed out. Next, vibrancy. I could use saturation here, but vibrancy is nice. It's essentially saturation, but it doesn't saturate skin tones. So if you are uh, working with pictures of people and you dial up the saturation, they're all going to look kind of orange. Their skin will turn, to, turn an unnatural orange color. So I'm going to go with vibrancy and just dial this up here. You can also click on the number here and drag that. Okay. I can check these boxes here to turn off this particular adjustment. So if I check this box for enhance, it's only going to turn off vibrancy, leaving my adjustments for exposure and white balance. So I'm going to check this off and see just a minor adjustment, but some of the colors tend to pop a little bit more. We could check off exposure to see what difference that made. Lastly, I want to add uh, two adjustments that do not show up in this default panel. 
To do that, I'm going to go up to Adjustments here, and I'm going to browse through all my options. The ones with these little dot to the left side means they're already shown. Anything without the dot, I have yet to add. I like to add Edge Sharpen and Vignette fairly often for a nice artistic look. Notice the keyboard shortcuts on the right side here, Control s and Control v I'm going to close this panel, and on my keyboard, hit Control s for Edge Sharpen. I'm going to increase the edges a little bit so that the uh, ice and the water on the side of the glass tend to pop out a little more. I'm going to hit Control v on my keyboard to add a vignette, and you'll notice that the outsides of the images get the image gets darker. I'm going to check this off so you can see it again. Here's before the vignette, here's with the vignette. Lastly, if I want to see the image without any adjustments, if I want to see the original, we call that the master. So I'm going to hit M for master on my keyboard. You'll notice at the top it says the words master image so I know what I'm looking at and it has removed all adjustments. I'm going to toggle that off so I can see after. And you can toggle between these nicely to see if you're kind of going in the right direction or if you need to change something else.